All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be featuring the Tier 8 Tech Tree Heavy Cruiser, the Charles Martel. I know I haven't posted a video in quite a while, but I was doing my exams, of course, for my university and stuff. But now I have, of course, summertime, so I have a more free time, so I'm going to be able to record and upload more videos, etc. But again, I do apologize, of course, about not being able to upload for quite a while, um, around three weeks, I guess. Um, but we did post a Twitch clip video last week. But, I mean, in terms of real content, like recorded content, it's been around a month. Um, I do apologize greatly, of course. Um, I will try to be streaming more, etc. And, of course, uh, trying to upload more videos on YouTube, etc. Um, but otherwise, um, I think we should get into this video for Charles Martel. It's actually one of my, not favorite ships in the game, but it's actually one of those ships which I quite enjoy personally. Um, so anyway, so what is it? It is the Tier 8 heavy cruiser this is the um for the tech tree to go up to the henry line of course as we know and um, it comes off algeri then there's charles we already covered san louis in a video so it's only fair we cover charles martel and in the future we could cover uh, algeri and la galissonier and henry of course etc and maybe even the rest but that uh, we'll see anyway so this is the charles um i think we should start off with the armor layout here so we have 25mm nose armor, 27mm deck armor, 27mm side, and 25mm aft. And of course, the citadel is quite gigantic on this ship. You have to be really careful. Um, in the middle, you do have some spaced armor. But as you can see under the guns, the citadel extends right outside to the external piece of the hull, which means you can get citadel quite easily. Um, so do, and at weird ass angles, so do be careful. Um, when you're playing the Charles, because you can get actually pretty smashed in it. It's not that easy to play, to be honest. Um, in terms of the commander build I'm gonna be running is Last Stand, Incoming Fire Alert, Gun Feeder, and Grease the Gears, and Consumables Enhancements, and Demo Expert, AR, Adrenaline Rush, um, Superintendent, and Survivability Expert, and Concealment Expert. The reason I'm not running top grade is, even though it could be useful, especially for something like a Henry, um, with this one, the concealment's actually 10.7 on the Charles, which is quite good, to be honest, um, for a heavy cruiser. Um, so I'd rather um, go with concealment, etc., instead of the top grade. Um, for my modules here, we're going to be running concealment system mod 1, prop mod 1, aiming system mod 1, engine boost mod 1, and main armaments mod 1. And I'm going to be using the hydro here, and these are consumables that we have available to us. Um, in terms of the camouflage, because I show this every video, um, so we have the normal camo, of course, we have the alternate normal camo, which I think looks pretty pretty decent, then we have a congratulatory, this is an old perma camo, which I think looks actually pretty decent, to be honest, um, but it's very old, um, this is the space one, the bionic one, which, you, which I think also looks pretty good, actually, to be honest, and there's also the Halloween one, which uh, makes it look like uh, Egyptian style, it's interesting that the flags are on the side here, and it looks like I didn't. I never even noticed because I've never even looked at this camo, but it looks like the the Egyptian thing is holding uh, the flagpole, right? It it looks like it's holding the flag. I never even noticed that. It does look pretty good. Um, but yes, this is the Halloween camo, but I won't be using it, of course, because I think it is a bit too over the top for me. So I'll be turning that off. Um, anyway, I'll cover the ship character six right now. If you want to skip to the game, by the way, you totally can. I'll keep the video chaptered, so you can just skip to the gameplay if you wanted to. Um, but for ship characteristics here, we have 41,600 HP with survivability expert. We have 16% torpedo protection damage reduction. For artillery, we have an 11 second reload on 9 guns and 203s. You pen 34 millimeters, pretty much standard pen. 18% fire chance, which is quite good to be honest for the reload. Um, tire traverse is 22 seconds, which isn't that bad either, to be honest. Uh, firing range is 17.6 kilometers, which is definitely playable. Um, you have 9km torps. Um, you have 14k damage, of course. Um, 60 knots. I mean, the torps aren't crazy, but they have really good firing angles, which I'll show you in the match, of course. Um, it has a ASW airstrike or whatever, 7 km. Um, AA defense isn't, isn't anything too good, especially without DFA or anything. So we're not going to have good AI ourselves. Maneuverability, it goes really fast. 34 knots stock. Um, of course, you have engine boost, which buffs it by 20%. Plus, we have the engine boost mod, which gives us a longer duration 
um, of that speed boost. We have a 9.8 second rudder shift and 690 meter turning circle radius. Um, and for concealment, we have, as we discussed previously, 10.7 um, uh, detection by sea. And we have 8 kilometer smoke shooting, which isn't too stealthy, to be honest. But, I mean, this thing is meant to be open watering, etc. Um, if you do want to play, you could totally play it smoke bot if you wanted to. But, I mean, I don't know. If you're going to be playing it solo like me, I mean... You're going to have to be open watering or using islands, etc. And you actually can use islands in this thing because the arcs on this thing aren't like the best. So you can obviously arc over islands and it should be pretty, well, e I would say easy, but you also have to aim quite well to hit targets. But anyway, so this is the Charles Martel in port. I think we should go into the game in the Charles Martel. All right, so here we are on Northern Lights. Um, tier 6 match, we're lucky. Um, it is my first match of the day here. Um, I actually just woke up. It's uh, midday. <laughs> it's 1 p.m. No school, no problems, right? Um, anyway, we got a tier 6 match, which is super lucky for the Charles, to be honest. I don't see how we die. Um, unless we play bad, right? Um, or we play too aggressive. Um, because Or we get smashed by CV. But I don't think we're gonna get too smashed, I think. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna go to the right side of the map here, by the way. Because I think that is the... Um, Better option for us in the Charles here. Um, but yeah, I think I'll skip this p part. Um, and I'll, re you know, continue where we actually start shooting things. So I don't bore you to death. Oh no, I'm spotted. Hello. There is a Bayard there. Hello, my friend. So we're gonna ha I pre preloaded AP actually because I, I knew there was like a Bayard around. But I didn't think he was gonna sit broadside like this. I don't want to waste a reload boost here. Actually. We will. Um, I would. I was calling it a waste because I think he can just accelerate and turn out instantly, and he would live here. But I think we can output some damage on him. He's not. It doesn't seem to be um, available. Okay, no, he's turning. Okay, he's gonna live. So we did kind of waste the reload boost there, but it's okay. I mean, he's down to 14k HP, so he's taking some damage for sure. It's all unhealable because, like us, he doesn't have a heal. But as we know, Bayard is different to Charles Martel. I have a video on Bayard, by the way, on my channel already. <sighs> I should have used Hydro, but I didn't because I'm dumb. Uh-oh, and I'll take two Torps. What are those? I don't know. <laughs> that was really dumb. So I sat in a gap, <laughs> and I took Torps on purpose. That was pretty bad, but it's okay. I don't know why they didn't do too much damage to me. I don't know what kind of DD that was. Sims, please don't arm. Thank you. <laughs> God. That could have ended really badly. That could have ended really badly because I turned my brain off because I saw a Bayard AFK. Well, he wasn't AFK. He was broadside. And then I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Free, free, free. Neuron activation or whatever. Oh my God, it's a submarine. This is a big problem for us, actually. Because I don't see what we do to kill the guy. Um, I'm going to turn away and run off the face of the planet here. Um, because I don't, you know, I, I don't think we should sit here. I think the DD that torped us in mid was a Sims, if I were to guess. It could have been the catch a lot. But I think it was the Sims. I don't know how many torps there were. They didn't do a lot of damage. They did 11k for two torps, which is quite surprising. So, I don't know. They could have been the, the, the catch a lot or the Sims, to be honest. I, I don't really know. Um, it looks like our anchorage is dead. It's okay. Um, we're up to 35k damage, which is pretty much zero in matchmaking like this. But we do have to play like a pussy, basically, at this point. Because we really can't do anything against the sub, to be honest with you. Like, we can pretend we can, but we really can't. Um, I'm not going to drive over him. That's just an unnecessary risk we're not going to take. Um, another broadside cruiser here. Can we actually load some AP and expert loader this? Ah, not expert loader, but... Uh, Reload boost the guy. Okay, we get 8k. We do have to be careful against the Bagration. He has good AP angles, I think. So we have quite good AP. And as I showed you in port, the Citadel is pretty crazy. Large on this one. Oh, he's getting Citadel from the other side, actually. <laughs> he's he's run into a crossfire, basically. So he's probably gonna die. Um, the, I'll show you the Torp angles after we're done with this fight with the Bagration, to be honest. I am a bit busy right now. There's a lot going on. Cruisers are dying left, right, and center. Things are happening. I'm going to launch fighters here, but I think it's too late. Please don't kill me. Oh, Bagration, of course, has a... Uh-oh. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. 
Okay, good. I ha I actually covered Bagration in a video recently. Well, recently, like two months ago now. Please don't kill me though. I think I went to broadside. Yeah, I did. <sighs> we took a bit of too much damage, I would say, against the Bagration. We took 11k. We did a round to him. We did a round. We were at 36k, I think. Or something. 30k, maybe. So we did like 40k to the guy. So he's gotten smashed, for sure. Um, but, um, I don't know. I'm trying to understand where we're going to get some damage. Nagato's an option. Oh, he's back! Uh, I should have just shot HA. I think he died, uh, dies anyway. Please! Oh, zero damage. Oh, he got Citadel and he dies. Um, so there's an Ise here, Richelieu, Nagato, this is interesting bro, I think we can get some damage, the problem, I'm a bit scared still, I have to be honest, I am a bit scared of the U190 still, because I don't know exactly where he is, and the fact that I don't know where he is means he could like, pounce on my head or something and kill me, oh Bayard's back, I, d I don't know where the sub is, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. To be honest. He says back on our forehead for the 50th time. Actually, actually, I think it's the second time. Or first. I don't know. Maybe second. I remember there was one drop. That's okay. We're gonna go for the Mayoko or something. We do have the Undyne in the way. And I believe he has his uh, submarine spotting consumable or whatever. I don't know why the Issei is going for me. I guess it's because I don't have a lot of AA as Charles. And I'm quite isolated, I guess. We get a fighter from our CV, which is nice of him, I guess. Mm -mm -mm. I have a fighter again in five seconds. I want to actually damage the Bayard and the Mayoko. Pot potentially even the Nagato or the Issei, because I think it's free. The problem is I don't know where the sub is. And I know I've, I'm repeating myself a hundred times. But I, I am actually quite scared of the submarine, because you never know. You never know when he could pop up on your forehead. I'm actually going to use Hydro, because you don't know. He could literally be launching Torps on Hydro or something. Killed the Bayard there pretty easily, to be honest. And now we have a free Vesser. I'm actually going to use Speed Boost, just in case the Nagato tries to sneaky shot me or something. I don't know. You never know. Should I be using AP against the Vesser, to be honest? Um, that's the question of all time, probably. And we're gonna ask for spotting on the Vester. I don't think we're gonna be getting it. And to be honest. And we actually also need to start re-angling here because the Vester is gonna come with AP rockets towards us. And I'm gonna load HE actually. Here. Vester, I think he's actually going for the Maya, not me, because if he drops me here, this would be a really bad angle, I think, for him. No, he's going for the Fuso. Anyone but me, I guess. That's good. 6,000. Now, we are really lucky here. I have to be honest about uh, the tier the tier 6 matchmaking. But honestly, even Charles in tier 10 matchmaking, if you're quite decent that the game can hold its own. Um, it is quite a good ship, to be honest, overall. Is it as good as a, as a Charles Martel? I mean, it's actually pretty good. The thing with Charles is, of course, it's a tier higher. It has a heal. But uh, for tier 8, I mean, it's a tier 8 cruiser. Most of them don't have heals. This one's actually pretty good. Um, and it can actually deal with tier 10s quite quite decently, I would say. Not, It's not as good as a Henry or something into tier 10 matchmaking, of course. But, it does hold its own. It's not a bad tier 8 cruiser. Especially if you know what you're doing. Um, but of course, that's with most ships. If you know what you're doing, you're going to have a pretty decent time overall. Because you have to keep in mind, in randoms, you're most of the time playing against not really good players. Even if you're in a tier 8 against tier 10s. So even though it sucks... Matchmaking wise, um, as long as it's not against like a sub or, or a CV or something, you should be relatively okay. Or against a Petro or something, I don't know, something extreme like that. Uh, but anyway, so here, I haven't been using all my reload boosts, as you notice. I don't know, I mean, you can of course do more damage, etc. Normally what you want to try to be doing, which is, I've talked about this every video, I've covered any reload boost, anything, is... You set the guy on fire, he DCPs, and the ultimate goal is after he DCPs, you click your consumable, and you get more shots, and you try to get those permafires, so you can output more damage, of course. 
That um, shouldn't be too hard. Um, in this case, we're able to use this island. Now, there is a submarine spotting me right now. It is a submarine. I assure you, it's a submarine spotting me from our spawn. He could be on my head. I really don't know where he is. I'm actually concerned about it, so I'm going to actually turn into the enemy spawn here and run at the Nagato. Maybe try to get away from the enemy, uh, the enemy sub, because I don't know where he is. So, We're up to 160k damage almost, which is pretty decent, to be honest. Um, even in tier 6 matchmaking, I mean, it's whatever. We did play it pretty bad at the start, because we took those torps. But honestly, um, pretty pretty decent. Otherwise, and we play passively. We try not to die, there's a Moga, oh, a Mayoko there. So I'm gonna turn into it. This is, might be the suicide rush here. I'm just scared, bro. I'm scared of the sub, man. I'm scared of the sub. I don't care. I'm scared. So I'm just gonna run it like this. It is what it is. My Oko's coming. Um, I have Hydro in 5 seconds. My Oko might have actually torped from here. Nagato's shooting HE at me. I'm really lucky, actually, because he does overmatch me. In tier 6, it does feel actually indestructible almost, the ship, to be honest. The speed. The guns. The guns are really good. The speed is really good. That's a real booster. I, I hope I can get the Vesser. If I can get the Vesser, that would be really good. The problem is, he's gonna hurt us quite a lot before we even get close to him, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, well, GG. I think I die, because now my Oko set me on fire, because I dcp the plot. It is what it is. It sucks, but it is what it is. I'm gonna reload boost this, because if he sets me on fire, it's over. And then we'll get one more reload boost for the carrier, maybe. If I'm lucky. Kraken? Nope. Submarine takes it. It's okay. Um, <sighs> we need to try live and try to find the carrier. I don't know if I can find the carrier in time. We'll see. Okay, he missed me. It's not about the time. I think the time is fine. We definitely have infinite time here. The problem would be is if he kills us before time runs out, right? Um, or, so, yeah, exact. Or he kills us before I, I spot him and kill him, right? Um, but 181k damage isn't too bad, I guess. Um, we have to be bow into the rockets, broadside to the bombs. And, well, bow into the torps as well. So. There he is. Hello, friend. I'm going to actually use HE here because with AP I was just overpenning him, to be honest. This could be a mistake here, but whatever. Yeah, I guess it's a mistake because we're doing zero damage anyway. Let's try one AP salvo. Let's try one. The problem here for us is he's going to go behind this rock. Please citadel him. Oh no, he's going to redrop. I turned my brain off. Let's hope he doesn't kill me though. He's slowing down. Okay, he did zero damage with rockets. Speed boost in nine seconds. Citadel? Okay, AP might be the play here. It's free. We need to keep him spotted, of course. We're gonna launch fighter and everything. I just wanna kill it, man, please. Free damage game, though. 200k, not bad. Mm. He torps me, but I think he missed. He's gonna get behind the rock here. I don't think I actually end up killing him, because I think someone's gonna take it here, to be honest. I have to be honest, my carrier will probably take it, to be honest. Um, but I'm gonna click OK on him again, I don't think that does anything here. They are tier 6 planes, so they're not even that tanky, especially German tier 6 planes, like what? But uh, they do, they do tank quite a fair amount, they don't do any damage apparently to me. Luckily, because if they did, we'd, we'd be dead. <laughs> and then we wouldn't kill him, right? That would be really sad. I hope I do kill him here, though. I think we do. Unless the CV comes. Like, our CV. Hey, there he is! Let's go! Hello, friend. I'm gonna kill him. Please. Yes, our Kraken. And that's GG. Oh, wait, no, it's not. There's another ship alive! The submarine! I don't know where he is, though. But uh, we'll dodge the strike. And... No, we won't dodge the strike. We'll aid the Torp. Yep, but we live, we live anyway, so it's okay. Um, I'm gonna skip till the end here, so you don't have to waste your time um, to to find the submarine or whatever. <laughs> but GG, I guess. All right, so we end up getting 217k damage, 254 shell hits, 25 plane kills, five kills, 13 fires, seven citadels, 
and we got arsonist confederate kraken and high caliber for team score we ended up getting top of our team at 2.8k base xp which is double second place which isn't too bad but we were top tier of course but so was our anchorage and bloody all stock and salmon to be honest they were also top tier um uh, but um yeah we did pretty decent i would say um detailed report um we got 68k damage on the nagato 41k on the vesser 38k on the bagration 33k on the bayard 18k on the isa and some damage on the rest um we actually did of course 217k damage mostly from he and ap we did 100k from ap 74k from he and 35k from fires with from that he of course as well um pretty decent game overall um we took 35k hp ourselves so we were quite low um we got 464,000 credits 10k xp 1k free xp and 13,000 commander xp and i believe that is with the uh yeah uh, it's with the bonus package, but not any of the extra bonuses. Um, but that's pretty much the Charles for the gameplay. For my build again, once again, I have uh, Last Stand, uh, Incoming Fire Alert, Gun Feeder, Grease the Gears, uh, Consumables Enhancements, Demo Expert, AR, General Rush, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, and Concealment Expert. In terms of my equipment, I have Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Engine Boost Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. Um, if th those of you are wondering, will I run this build on Henry? I wouldn't, to be honest. Um, Last Sand, honestly, this type of build, it's decent on the San Louis and the Charles. Because their concealment is better, etc. And their rudders break instantly. This one's a decent build on those two. But on Henry, you would change your build, etc. Um, so this is specifically for Charles. Um, in terms of my statistics for the Charles, if we were to take a look, I don't know if I can load them up here. I have to find them. Random. Please. Scroll down. Try to find Charles Martel. Now, this is the hardest part of the video, in my opinion. And me trying to find the statistics for the ship. Uh, because it does take quite a... Oh, found it! Okay, so I have 20 games in the Charles Martel, 60% win rate. 128k average damage and that was actually my highest damage game that game and most kills <laughs> but anyway 128k average which is pretty decent for a tier 8 cruiser to be honest um, 128k isn't too bad um, but yeah that's the charms um, and where it's available of course it's available in the tech tree at tier 8 um, for the french heavy cruiser line that goes up to henry and condi etc honestly this line is actually pretty good all the way through i think lagali algerie uh, Charles, San Louis, Henry, and Condi are all quite good, to be honest, ships. Um, so, I, honestly, if you're going to play them, you're going to have a quite a good time. I have a video on San Louis already on my channel. Um, I'll leave it in the description um, to link to that if you want to watch it, etc. Um, but anyway, that was the Charles Martel. Um, personal opinions, of course. I think this ship is great. Um, pros and cons. I mean, the pros are it has good maneuverability. It has good guns. Um, it has quite decent, I mean... Um, consumables you have a fighter or whatever and a hydro or whatever the, the fighter doesn't really mean much but the hydro is pretty cool of course uh, speed boost is nice real booster is nice i mean in terms of the actual downsides is of course your armor you're very squishy and your rudder i mean it breaks instantly so you have to be really careful about that otherwise pretty good ship overall um definitely recommend playing it all the way through if you are grinding um it is a good definitely a good ship i recommend having even just to have it is pretty good um that's pretty much the entire video though guys i hope you enjoyed please do let me know what you want to see in the next video in the comments below i would greatly appreciate it of course um for this was of course tech trials that means i covered tech, tech tree ships in this one um fresh look i cover premium ships um and reviews i cover just any new ship that comes out and how i play i cover specifically tier 10s um special or not um, in these uh, tech trials and fresh look, I cover any tier below 10. Um, but tier 10s are specifically for the how I play series, etc. But anyway, if you want to see a particular ship, please do let me know in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you found the video useful or helpful in any way, I would greatly appreciate a like, a share, or a subscription to the channel, guys. I would really, truly, greatly appreciate it. But I will see you in the next video. And big fan.